Today we are going to talk about portfolios in the workplace. Many of you kind of looking at the list of organizations that are here um, will have probably come across portfolios or something like that due to registration reasons. Um, we have teacher registration, nurse registration, um, also master builders and so on. And so you probably have seen something like this. There's a cupboard somewhere in your organization where there are lots and lots of big binders, sometimes really, really huge ones, sometimes thinner ones, um, where a portfolio is kept. Of course, always in paper, and the cupboard is locked so that nobody can get to the confidential information. Um, and then you have to deal with that. For whom does that look familiar? Anyone got NZQA assessments? having to retain them forever for moderation. Is it your hands? Yeah. This is a picture from Vaita Mata DHB that I was um, lucky to take with consent from the DHB and that's why also the names are kind of um, pic pixelized because that was the normal process before they went um, electronic and used an electronic tool in order to just streamline the process of that appraisal which is done on a yearly basis and then also the three yearly registered nurse um, PDRP process for review so that the nurses can stay registered in order to provide us good healthcare services. And um, all of that of course meant lots and lots of paperwork. Um, the district health board is uh, across multiple hospital sites and so the assessors kind of needed to get everything taken to them and then returned and then it needed to go. Um, a peer needed to look at it, a manager needed to look at it, an assessor needed to look at it, the PDRP admin needed to look at it, and so on. So there's lots of people involved, and can you imagine how much the PDRP admin just has to do in order to drag all of these binders around? And so of course in today's uh, digital age, why not have something in the cloud? Why not have a tool for that? And um, that is where Mahara comes in. Um, a number of DHBs have decided to use the open source platform Mahara as their portfolio uh, tool. And um, it is open source, so they can either install it or have <coughs> a vendor um, support them with it. In contrast to Totara, it does not have a subscription fee. Um, so they are, uh, it's a different model for that. And so you might wonder why am I standing here today talking to you? Well, I got actually involved with Mahara in 2008 while I was still at the University of Luxembourg in uh, Europe when we introduced it in a Bachelor of um, Educational Sciences. But then in 2010, I moved to Wellington to work uh, to start working at Catalyst in the development team um, that produces Mahara, that maintains Mahara, and does most of the work um, with the platform. But we do also have contributors from around the world. And um, it is really great working with all of them. The majority, of course, are in education. But increasingly, we are also working with organizations like uh, district health boards and teacher registration purposes so that we can have a platform that is not just school or university focused, but can also be used more in the workplace. And so why I think, or why Desley in Austin asked me to come here is kind of check with you, well, would that be something that could be complementary to what you're doing in Totara? Because in an e-portfolio tool like Mahara, what you can do really well is reflective practice. And you can visualize learning that has happened. You're not just having a checklist that you're taking things off and um, having things for compliance reasons there, but you're actually showing the evidence because you can upload images, video, you can write text, you can have reflective journals um, in a safe space that is in initially only private to yourself and then it is shared with an assessor or with a peer who looks at that evidence. So we can really work with what has been produced. <coughs> kind of going back to the example of the nurses, it's not enough that an assessor kind of sees a tick box by a nurse saying, yes, I can put a needle, stick a needle in somebody's arm. No, they kind of need to really see that to know is the arm bruising, is it not bruising, is the, the patient cringing, um, how are they talking to the patient, what is communication. So a lot of the competencies that the nurses need to demonstrate, you need to have that evidence going with it. And that is what the ePortfolio tool is for, that you can show that evidence. 
And, if, and that's why some of those binders are really huge because everybody puts a lot of stuff in there. And electronically, you can just send somebody a link or link it into the LMS like Totara in order to, for an assessor then to just click on it and go into the portfolio no matter where they are. So the nurses can also update their portfolio on different computers around the wards. They don't have to be in one particular place. The assessors can access it anywhere. The peer assessors can go in there and make an assessment very quickly. And it also changes how the assessment is being done. So it is not just for the efficiency sake, but really also highlighting um, elements where there is more professional development needed and also what is already going well and then have conversations around it. So the uh, portfolio is not reducing the amount of conversations that are happening amongst the assessors, managers and uh, peer assessors and the, the actual nurse, but it's enhancing it because they have something, act something real that they can talk about um, and use that as basis. And um, so the, the idea for reflective practice is not just kind of putting a piece of evidence up there, but really also saying why this is important to my own learning. Why have I chosen this particular piece, either because it was my best work ever or because I learned something on it. And that is where the differences I find to the learning management system and where really the portfolio idea comes to fruition um, in the, the concept of folio thinking. Because what we are doing is that we are collecting, organizing, reflecting and connecting what we have learned, um, how that we can also speak intelligently and concisely about our own learning experiences. So it becomes more of a storytelling rather than just here's one assignment, I'm going from one to the next and so on, and just ticking boxes there. It is telling the story of how we have grown over time. And that is where the portfolio is just really fantastic at, because that learning is made visible, we provide evidence, and we can share that with other people in order to connect with them and also have that social element in there from learning from each other. And so altogether, I think there are five main activities that we'll do in a portfolio. Namely, the first one is creating content. Because first we need learning evidence there. Be that a video, be that just a recollection, or be that an image, depending on what is possible in your area that you're working in. Then that is being collected. Put it all into one place, kind of sometimes I say into, into a big shoebox, um, so that you can then look there once you're ready to create your portfolio in order for the registration to be seen. And from there you select things that are really important to you for that particular portfolio that you're creating. And that is the curative element. Um, because we can't always give an assessor everything because that would just overload them. And um, some things are just might have been very important at the beginning of a learning journey, but maybe two weeks later you've had a much better piece of evidence that showed your learning progress more concisely and in a better light than that first initial one. So you wouldn't show that first one, but maybe that second one, and reflect on it and showed why that is important to you. And um, that's where the curation is, because that way we also make it easier for an assessor to see what they need to focus on and then judge the learning that has happened. Fourthly, there's the conversations, conversations with others. You can share a portfolio with a peer, you can send it, to, um, students send it to their grandparents or to their parents and kind of showcasing what they're doing well. Um, it can um, be shared with a FANA in order to also bring people from the community inside. They don't necessarily need to have a login on the site, which helps with your organization and keeping kind of the single sign on there and not have other people in the HR sync. And really also bring people in make those connections, have conversations because they do enhance the learning. And through that, make connections with others that can then also enhance the network that you're working with. And um, all of these things together really help with learning because through that reflective practice, we are improving what we are doing. Um, it's not just like what we've done in the past, being in a class, got a paper back within C minus, some comments on in the margin, that just went straight into the bin because we completed that 
piece of learning that was one assignment done. After that, nobody cared about it anymore. Whereas with portfolio work, we are making connections between what we, have, what we have been learning. We are not just completing one thing and then forgetting about it. No, we are taking one thing and then seeing how it can also be applied elsewhere. And um, therefore really having that knowledge transfer as well and making that learning visible. And just as a small example, and when you get the slides, you can kind of go to that particularly if, if you like yourself. But just pointing out, um, where the reflective element comes in and that you don't always just give everything in your portfolio is kind of things like the point at which I realized. So Teresa McKinnon here from um, Warwick University is talking about her certified member of the Association of Learning Technologists certificate that some of you might have been considering going through. And um, there she needs to create a portfolio. And so she pulls out her important learning moments the point at which I realized I revisited things. The feedback and mentoring was helpful. So she's remembering things. She is talking to other people. She's connecting with people. She's having conversations. And a highlight, she is curating all her evidence that she's had. And all of that just in three, four little paragraphs instead of showing pages on pages on pages to an assessor who needs to go through her portfolio. Just a couple of examples where portfolios are being used. Um, one of them here in New Zealand is uh, Kopaki Tiaki Hora um, healthcare portfolio that um, we at Catalyst have set up for the district health boards, not just for the nurses, but for all healthcare professionals that are working um, in that area. And currently it is being used um, by Waitemata DHB because they were the initiators um, of that site but it is available to others because the nice thing about Mahara is it is multi-tenanted. So if nurses move from one DHB to another, they wouldn't necessarily have to move their portfolio around. No, they can stay on the same platform, just authentication moves, and they can just continue making it also more of a lifelong journey rather than, again, just this compartmentalized learning and um, looking at the journey through learning. And um, then there is also the College of Nurses that is using Mahara as well with through nurse portfolio. So um, every member uh, of the college can have an account for free and therefore also use it outside of the DHBs in order to keep up with their registration requirements. In the school sector, my portfolio .school.nz has been around in New Zealand um, since 2008 and initially it was quite a bit actually students using it but in recent years we've seen more and more teachers starting to use the site because they can track their competencies they can use it for the teacher appraisals and just go through the standards for the teacher um, teaching profession in order to complete them there share them with their principals and similar things can also be done in other professions um, we know that at Vintech for, uh, Veltech, sorry, Veltech, for example, the hairdressers have been using Mahara for many, many years. Um, funeral directors started last year. And uh, plumbers have been using it. Construction um, workers are looking at it because they all are in a profession where they need to demonstrate skills and competencies. And demonstration comes along with evidence. And oftentimes the LMS falls short of that because there we can typically only kind of put a tick box in and that's it, but not really store all that evidence. And um, that is where we just have a little bit of an advantage in Mahara. Okay. So I wanted to show you an example um, so that you can see what it looks like be besides just looking at slides. And so the I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, one is from Waitemata DHB, and that is a portfolio that has been set up for the uh, nurse registration. And what um, the nurses do is they go into Koavatea Learn, which is the Totara site that is being used by a number of DHBs in the North Island. And then they have a link into their portfolio area. So they don't need to go somewhere else um, they are just piped through with their login that they already have and can access the site and um, what Waitemata has done is also create templates for the nurses 
because everybody needs to go through the same portfolio process. They have all the same requirements. So why make nurses kind of create pages um, themselves? And so you have them all available so that all the domain information is there for them to easily consume. And also what um, you can see here is that information from the LMS is being taken through. So we can send profile fields, for example, that have already been filled in the LMS or that come straight from the HR sync and put that directly into the portfolio as well. Again, making it easier for people not to get information out of sync. And then the nurses can simply fill in their portfolios and um, therefore have an easy way of completing the registration requirements. Um, in this case, Waitemata opted to have one domain on a page, which is um, a very good idea to make it simple and have everything in one place for the nurses. And because we're in healthcare, at least currently, it is not possible really to share images and videos, so they haven't gotten to that point yet. That's why it's very text heavy. Other portfolios might look very different. So if we are looking at um, builders or um, at MB, then we might really have some images in there so that they, you can see kind of um, what evidence they are looking at or how they are working with things or having a video of a process that can be shown simply because a patient is not involved, but just a rock or a street or so. And so what the uh, nurses do is they have their self-assessment for every single domain, and um, they can very easily click the competencies, see the indicators, so that they know what they are needing, uh, what they are being assessed against. And then they have the peer assessment sitting right next to it, and the peer assessor can't, in, in that case, can't actually see what the nurse has written. So it is a blind assessment. Um, because that was very important for Waitemata DHP to prevent that there's just copying and pasting going on and really have that, that peer assessment fresh um, without kind of looking into things. And um, there is no signature needed because everybody has a login. So we place the name there, we place the timestamp there so that everybody then who has access to the portfolio sees who actually entered that text. So through the, the process of going electronic and why Timata could also streamline certain processes and make it easier to not just collect the information but also deal with it and involve people in the process. And so the, the nurse just goes through her entire portfolio, fills it in, and the nice thing is she doesn't have to work on it all the time. She can come back, can come out, um, needs to rescue a patient, um, do a resuscitation or things like that. All of that and the electronic portfolio is still there. There's no misplacing of papers. Again, making it easier for them to know where everything is. And it can also be kept throughout the three years. So they don't have to worry about moving houses or moving wards. Everything is in one place. It's quite good they can just upload uh, something that was significant and then a month later they could match it up to the competency. Exactly, yes. So that, that is where the collection phase comes in, that you can collect everything and then later sort it out, organize things, um, whichever way you, you need it. Can you show us an example of that? Uh, yep. Um, so I'm becoming a different person now. I'm, I'm a test person, so I'm having split personality a bit. Um, because we have different ways of also dealing with the competency. So what I can show you now is um, using, having more of a visualization of where you are at um, within in the competency framework. And so what people can do is um, keep a running log of the, um, keep a journal, keep a reflective journal, kind of like a blog on, on WordPress or Medium, and um, have all of that in one place, and then later on decide what they want to do with it, where they want to put it. So in this case, um, we've got quite a bit of etymology going on here. And um, so if I want to go into a portfolio and say I want to add one of those journal entries, into my self-review, then I can say, okay, reflections from my journal. I've already created a page earlier, like, like a cook in a cooking show. Things are already there. 
um, that I can then go into a portfolio page and either I can set that up on my own from scratch or I can have a template for that and can then decide what elements of all the things that I've collected in my personal area I want to display on this page. And so that can be a journal entry, doesn't have to be the entire journal. And so I can be very selective and say, okay, I want to have the theoretical model in this case, save it. And if I want to have that same journal entry elsewhere, I can put it again into another page without needing to upload it again. I can also place images into the portfolio page and I've purposely activated the accessibility option so that I can show you, you don't need to use the mouse all the time. If you have a blind colleague or if you have a colleague who prefers the keyboard, uh, Mahara is accessible so that it can be navigated just by the keyboard or by using a screen reader, therefore making it also compliant for organizations like yours that need to follow accessibility standards. And then I can either upload a file from my computer or if I already have um, images uploaded earlier, I can go into them and then um, pull them out and display them in the page. And just select the image. I don't even need to have a title so that it can also be a decorative image and place that into my, my page. And as soon as I click on the display page, I see what somebody else would see if they had access to it. So I'm going outside of the uh, um, editing mode. And all that I've done so far is private. So nobody would have had access to that portfolio yet because I need to decide with whom I want to share that. And um, I can share my portfolio with a single person. I can share it with all of you, if all of you were in a group on Mahara, or I can share it with somebody publicly or give, give a secret URL so that somebody can get to it without an account, but Google doesn't learn about it. And so in this case, I shared my portfolio with Daniel, who is my assessor. And um, the one page that you haven't seen yet on this portfolio is my competency framework. So I've created my pages in the portfolio here. I've got the framework, I've got my reflections in there, and um, I decided to make that a, an employability portfolio uh, where I need to fulfill certain competencies. And so this is the, the piece that Waitemata doesn't have because we are going down a different route for them, and but build something similar with a slightly different purpose. But the idea here is that you can very easily visualize your competencies. Um, because oftentimes competency frameworks are quite long. This is a very short one. Sometimes it's 120 um, items or much longer. And so what you would have is you'd have your portfolio pages either thematically sorted um, according to dates or anything like that. And then on the left-hand side, you can see the actual competency standards. And in contrast to, to other frameworks, you don't need to go off and find the PDF where it's described of what you actually need to do. No, that is uh, right there. So on hover, when you're on a desktop or um, laptop, or on click, when you're on mobile, so that it's also accessible, uh, making it possible for you to see immediately what is required of you, and also for the assessor to see that directly. And now what I can do is say, okay, um, reflections from my journal, the content on that page fulfills the teamwork competency. So click that. Per default, I'm asked, why do you think this was first the competency teamwork? Instead of just saying, okay, it, it fulfills it, I actually need to say why. Making it a kind of sort of meta reflection, allowing me also to show the assessor why I think this belongs there, instead of having the assessor kind of wonder and needing to interpret why does this person suddenly think this is teamwork? I don't see it. Whereas with that extra reflection and tying it into the competency, they actually know why you think this is important in that uh, case. Um, and they would also see the, uh, the requirements still down here at the bottom so that they can always refer back to them. And then the icon changes into a blue circle saying it is ready for assessment. 
Now I can become Daniel, who, since we've given him access to the portfolio, can now access the portfolio, can look at each individual page, and once he's done that, he can also again see the competencies right there and see what I have written, why I think I'm fulfilling the teamwork competency. He can then give me feedback. <coughs> Make that feedback. And because he's not quite sure yet that I've actually met the competency, um, he can say, you partially meet it. Um, or meets it or doesn't meet it. Can you change those? And said. you can change all that wording. You yeah. can have that entire competency framework in Te Reo Māori, in Chinese, in Japanese. doesn't need to say competency, can say partially met the standard, or so-so, kind of still yeah. needs some work, anything you like. Yeah. Currently, it is three statuses, so we are following the uh, traffic lights, so red, yellow, and green. And then the yellow one just indicates, okay, there's still a bit more to do. Green one, it is ticked off. And that is an enhancement to the uh, normal evidence map. In my group earlier, we said kind of why do we consider things or why do we want to have a plan so for the ROI? So why do we have that electronically available? In the past, evidence maps were on paper on an Excel spreadsheet and you could only put a tick mark in. Here you have three different statuses. You can actually see the standards, which usually do not quite fit on a, in an Excel spreadsheet quite easily. So really the enhancement there is adding more elements into it without actually cluttering the screen too much because we are still focusing on a matrix, having icons there, and then everything else is behind it. And therefore also making it possible for an assessor to just go to that page and say, well, actually, I don't need to look at the career readiness portfolio page yet because they haven't tied it to any, any competency. So you can also judge how you want to work with your time because you simply already know have they already done something or not instead of going through every single page that is in the portfolio, looking at the evidence and then only realizing, oh, they haven't tied it back yet to anything. So kind of um, also work efficiencies besides showcasing the evidence and also tying it to the competencies and visualizing that. And that is kind of a very brief look. We can happy to show you more of things and also different examples, but I've kind of called out all the um, education examples to show you a couple from the workplace. And um, if you are thinking like, well, this is a, just need to find the page. Um, this might be something I'd be interested in. Um, we do have a bunch of user groups, um, similar to the Totara user groups. Um, this is the Mahara world. Antarctica is not missing by mistake. We simply don't know of anybody using it yet, so our map does not have Antarctica. But we do have a user group in New Zealand, in Australia, in Japan, um, in the States, and then quite a few in the UK, where it is um, very popular. And um, if you would like to talk a little bit more about it and see what others in New Zealand are doing, there is a Mahara Hui happening at the University of Waikato in Hamilton on the 7th of June, about 10 to 3 o'clock, free event, and everybody is welcome. <laughs> Time is up. <laughs> and, and I guess <laughs> that <laughs> means... <laughs> we have one in Queenstown. Um, you can set one up. Um, so I guess my time is up in 45 seconds. Um, my email is there. You can also find, um, get in touch with me via Desley or Austin um, or find me just at Catalyst up on Village Street. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina.